Well, hello, and again, thank you for taking time to join us for our uh, Bible study. This is actually the conclusion of the book of Acts today. Uh, so if you missed any along the way, uh, feel free to go back, grab those. And as Pastor Mark noted in uh, our, our Sunday announcements, and as well as uh, last week, we told you we're going to start up on the book of Mark then after this. So let's uh, finish strong today and then look at this next gospel text that we have to be able to explore together. Uh, so Acts, last chapter, uh, chapter 28, beginning at verse 1. Remember, uh, they've just had this huge shipwreck. So they're just, Violent just storm, coming toward, yeah, shipwrecked on the Super island. bad, super bad. Swam the shore from the... Rocks yeah, or whatever. Yeah, and barely get even the guys that can't swim. They're grabbing driftwood and they're all mm -hmm. floating there. But they all arrived. What was it 276 or something Everybody like survived. that? God uh, spared every soul. 200. Yeah, 276. All all alive. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, verse one. Once safely on shore, we found out that the island was called Malta. The islanders showed us unusual kindness. They built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood, and as he put it on the fire, a viper, driven out by the heat, fastened itself on his hand. When the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, This man must be a murderer, for though he escaped from the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. But Paul shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. The people expected him to swell up or suddenly fall dead, but after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. Hmm. All right, well, uh, first real quick note. Yeah. Uh, Malta, 500 miles uh, west of Crete. Remember, they started to try to winter in Phoenix. Yeah. And on, on the island of Crete. And the storm came and blew them. West, right? 500 miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, across the Mediterranean Sea. But uh, they were right where God wanted them to be. Interesting. Uh, I don't know. This kind of plays out like the opening to a book, I would think, when I read when I was uh, an adolescent or something like that or uh, watching an episode of Survivor or something. They get up on this island and it talks about all these islanders mm -hmm. that come out. And funny enough, you know, Luke, as we talk about, is the one doing the writing here. But even he says that the islanders showed us this unusual kindness. Like, they must have been super nice for the disciples to be mm -hmm. able to say, like, I mean, this is very unusual how nice they were to us. Yeah, I guess the, you know, uh, rescue operation. They saw people in distress. Yeah. Probably tugged at their heartstrings. To, yeah. We, and they, we can we want to help these people. I mean, they helped them build this fire and complete strangers. You know, they might not even have seen people like this before. Who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, but all of a sudden, they want to be able to help them out. And then this unusual circumstance happens with Paul. Fastened itself. I yeah. thought that's an interesting way. If you think about the uh, snakes we have here, I don't ever worry about a, a rattlesnake fastening itself. Yeah, them. usually it's, it's more of a striking, gonna, but I guess this viper. Grab this guy. Yeah, just really stuck to him. I mean, I'm, I mean, <laughs> it looks. Like the, it sounds like the viper's trying to save its life, right? He says he throws the brushwood in there, so it's the heat that drives it out. Right. So it's basically in with the firewood. So he's looking just to get, get out, out of there, there somehow. And so he grabs onto Paul. And just as we would assume would happen, you know, the people there assume too that this poisonous snake, they're probably super familiar with it, right? right? So Their people have been snake. bitten with it before and nothing good ever comes up. We don't have any uh, probably healing methods to be able to cure this. And they're just expecting Paul is probably going to die, right. you know, and uh, right. it, it kind of goes on there though. And it sees that he does not actually has no ill effects. And so then they swap their stance and they decide uh, he must be some type of a god. Yeah, and probably common this. for these people, right? These natives of Malta, you know, who knows exactly what type of gods that they're worshiping, but probably elements that are very uh, naturalistic, mm -hmm. you know, the, the sun, the yep. water, things that they, they live upon. And so they, they think that, and so they see these elements attack Paul and see him overcome it. So in their minds, again, he must all of a sudden be a god. Yeah, natural uh, justice. Right, so yeah, uh, he survived the shipwreck. So okay, he must be an innocent man. That's a but good then point. the snake is going to kill him. Oh nope, he's a murderer. Yeah, <laughs> God, God's the God's got him. <laughs> that's a good point. He's, no, he survived. Oh, he's a <laughs> yeah. That's more evidence of that thinking of kind of going down the line of those naturalistic gods. Yeah, that's a good point. Pretty interesting. All right, let's continue on. I'll re finish off the little section here. Verse right. seven. Uh, there was an estate nearby 
that belonged to Publius, the chief official of the island. He welcomed us to his home and for three days entertained us hospitably. <laughs> his father was sick in bed, suffering from fever and dysentery. Paul went in to see him and after prayer placed his hands on him and healed him. When this had happened, the rest of the sick island came and were cured. They honored us in many ways, and when we were ready to sail, they furnished us with the supplies we needed. Right. So, I mean, there's God working through Paul in, like, multiple ways. Like, he's uh, healing people who are sick, which, of course, that's just, uh, you know, when Jesus walked the earth, that kind of sign of the kingdom of God here is kind of, restoration to the fallen you know world yep uh, so he's actually doing good for the people just right there and then but like kind of even on another level he's like god is using paul to build goodwill with these people mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so when it's time for them to set sail to rome they're like oh we're so thankful for all you've done here's some here's the supplies you need just take it yeah uh, when we give this to you I mean, think about so, the i guess like you said the ministry that's involved in this then too right of he cures this individual's father, and so then everybody's like, "Wow, this is you know, this is amazing." I love it. it says the rest, not like some or a couple other guys. Yeah. The rest of the sick people all come, like all of them. Hey, guess what? <laughs> yeah, just healed. Yeah, and so obviously they probably have already heard about this guy too, right? This is the guy that the viper bit the hand. He was okay, and he heals like this entire island of people. Who and who knows how many yeah, yeah. of them are, but it still seems like there's a, a, all a of them decent are sick. group. Yeah, and. <laughs> I mean, imagine what that must have done for these people, too, of Paul being able to minister to them, just as we see Jesus use miracles to be able to basically show of who he is and proclaim the Father's will. We Mm -hmm. see Paul use the same thing. And imagine telling these individuals about who Christ is right after these events. I mean, this could carry down literally for generations for these people of this island region to be able to share with their children Mm -hmm. of who the true God is. You know, we used to worship the sun, the moon, and the stars. But then from the ocean one day, this man came and told us of who is his God. We thought he was a God. And he said, there's one much more powerful than I. And so I just, we don't don't hear about that in scripture, but I can only, I think, assume with, with great... Uh, evidence yeah, based off this, yeah, yeah, that that had to be something that those people would push down to, to future generations, or at least for the people who saw, be able to live in that mercy and grace of who Christ is for them, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's so, again, it's not boring. No. Right? There's all kinds of things going on. It's action packed yeah. uh, events. Just the details, and we'll get to more details as we you know, go through the chapter, but just the very specific time and places and people and Mm -hmm. uh, next section here, we'll just pay attention to just the details of the ship that they're on. Mm. It notes this part of the ship. It's just, uh, it's so historical. I mean, it's just such, it's written just as history, just like uh, Luke said at the beginning, hey, uh, Theophilus, I'm writing this for you so you'll understand this orderly account of everything that's taken place. in, the, in the, the beginnings of the church. And that so, probably would have, some of these details, like you said, that are coming up, probably would have provided credence for some people to be able to know that it's true. Because, I mean, some of the stuff would have been to, Yeah, anybody available. who read yeah. this could say, oh, okay, uh, this letter, whatever, circles back to Malta at some point. Hey, Publius, did this yeah. really happen? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Mean, hey, he, and then, you know, I'll, yeah, somebody, somebody, hey, my, my uh, cousin Joseph, you know, he worked down at the docks. When that ship came in, it didn't have those signs on it, you know, right. like, but, you know, they have these exact details. All right, let's exactly. go. We're, I'll we're read foreshadowing next, too much. Few, next few verses here. Verse 11. So after three months, and again, just, the, again, that concept of time that maybe when we read through the scriptures, we don't. Yeah. Really, but so for three months, and we think, if we're taking a trip, even a thousand miles or something. We we don't imagine that kind of time frame. But in this day and age, it's winter. Obviously, you're going to wait till the, the sailing season is is right again. The winds are blowing in the right direction. And so whatever for them, it was just life. I mean, yeah, yeah. They, they haven't even been able to communicate with anybody outside. Nobody knows of where they are, or where they're going. <laughs> they probably yep. know people think they're dead. Like, right. They don't know what's going on. They've been gone exactly. for months. So anyway, they're on Malta. After three months, we put out to sea in a ship that had wintered in the island. It was an Alexandrian ship, so it was from Egypt. 
uh, with the figurehead of the twin gods, Castor and Pollux. Uh, details again. Uh, we put in at Syracuse and stayed there three days. Uh, from there, we set sail and arrived at Regium. The next day, the south wind came up, and on the following day, we reached Petulia. So they're getting close. Uh, verse 14, there we found some brothers, uh, he means Christians, fellow Christians, who invited us to spend a week with them. And so we came to Rome. The brothers there had heard that we were coming, and they traveled as far as Forum of Appius and the Three Taverns to meet us. I think that's a cool name for a town. <laughs> three Taverns. At the sight of these men, Paul thanked God and was encouraged. When we got to Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with a soldier to guard him. So, um, well, one, I think the uh, south wind. So just as God had used this fierce storm, this hurricane-type storm, mm -hmm. to put them where God wanted them to be, mm -hmm. you know, God can also use the gentle south wind to yeah. put us where he wants us to be. Yeah. Uh, but God's always at at work. Um, God's always in control of whatever situation we find ourselves in. Uh, so I find that I find that comforting. I guess um, for me this little section here the big thing is just the the encouragement that Paul gets from all of the fellow believers, the brothers in Christ who come to to greet him, to welcome him, to honor him. Yeah, and they come from a, him, a ways away is what they're trying to explain, right? There's people that yeah. come from a decent uh, time to, or distance to be able to spend time with him. Yeah, it's a, it's a famous verse, uh, but Hebrews 10, and uh, maybe we'll read a few of the verses. Uh, Hebrews 10, let's say hmm, 23. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another toward love and good deeds. And then verse 25, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day, the day of the Lord mm. approaching. And obviously it's been really hard to gather together as a congregation uh, this past year. Uh, and we've got other ways of, uh, you know, doing the next best thing or, yeah. or trying to do the same thing. Uh, but we see here, I think, what I see, you know, how much Paul was encouraged. You think about now, he's been months and months on this journey. Well, even, what, two years in Caesarea as a prisoner, yeah. months and months on this crazy, you know, life-threatening uh, journey to, to finally get to Rome. And it was his goal, we know from years yeah, before, really to get to, to the there. heart of the empire to be able to share the gospel right at the capital, uh, with, at, you know, at the, the, the leadership level, share the gospel. And he, he finally gets, and he's been alone maybe with Luke and maybe a couple others, who know, uh, but the small group, and you kind of wonder, like you said, he had no communication without what yeah. else has been going on with the church. Is it still thriving? Has it been crushed? And, but to see people now, remember, he hasn't been here yet. But obviously the gospel has mm -hmm. made it to this part of the mm -hmm. world, to Italy. And to see the, the brothers and to know who you know, they know who he is and oh wow, it's Paul, it's the it's the church planner, it's and the, the word traveled fast here. I mean these these places that it mentions, they're not real close, you know. Somehow yeah. people got off and like, Hey Paul, yeah. Paul's coming. Yep. Uh, anyway, that encouragement I think is really, really cool. And you can kind of see uh, at uh, you know, before this, when Paul wrote the letter to the church in Rome, in chapter 1, right around uh, verse 11, Paul writes to these people. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the same people who came out to greet him when he finally made it, right? But he says, I long to see you mm -hmm. so that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts to make you strong. That this is, right, that, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. And so he, if there's something about being together in person yeah. to encourage one another, to spur one another along. Hebrews talked about uh, keeping us focused on the mission, keeping us focused on uh, how, how fragile and how short life is and how imminent Christ's return is, the day of the Lord. 
so we have that sense of urgency. And I mean, it's really ingrained in us, right? Uh, both as Christians and just as, as creatures of God. I mean, even in the very beginning when God creates Adam, it's the one thing that he says isn't right, correct? That there's nobody around him that's the suitable helper. Mm -hmm. And don't we all still serve as like helpers of one another. Not that we don't need individual time or people don't need quiet time, but we do need relationships with one another too and seeing what that looks like. Uh, I mean, it's, that's how the Lord made us and how the Lord continues to be able to preach his word too. Yeah, and so again, again, um, as we weren't uh, always able to come together in person uh, for that kind of encouragement, I know Pastor Jeremy and I have longed uh, to be with you again uh, to encourage one another in our spiritual walk. And this uh, all online worship and studies and devotions and things are just our, uh, our uh, humble or, I don't know, attempt uh, to try to continue that encouragement. So... Again, a lot of times this is one-way communication, yeah. Yeah. and so we love to hear your comments and emails, questions, uh, requests for prayer, for communion. Yep. Uh, we long to to continue that relationship with, with each and every one of you. Yeah, we just set up two more communion appointments actually right before we came over to do this. So please, if you would like communion, just another reminder, uh, in person, completely uh, distance place. We can go mm -hmm. in the sanctuary and literally just Pastor Mark or myself will be the only ones with you and are able to do that safely. If you feel comfortable in coming to visit us, please do. Please do. Yeah. I wonder I wonder if I, I maybe I get the sense. Sorry to get off the no, no. Bible study topic, but maybe some people feel like, oh, they're too busy. I'm not going to bother them. <laughs> um, and I guess if every single member wanted to come every single day, we couldn't handle it. But that's not every the case. Day, every day would be different, but yeah, we could still handle every single member. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, no, we want you to we want you to reach out, schedule a private communion, uh, especially if it's been over a month, two months, especially. Uh, that's a great gift that God's given us. He wants us to use it uh, to strengthen our faith. Mm -hmm. So we're uh, we're here to share that gift. All right, all right, back cool. to it. We on verse seventeen? Is that where we're at now? That's where we are. All right, I'll pick up here. Kind of goes to the well. You can stop when you want. All right. It's, it's All kind right. of one big section, but whatever. <laughs> no, I'm going to stop when I want. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I'll let you do part of it. There Three you. days later, he called together the leaders of the Jews. When they had assembled, Paul said to them, My brothers, although I have done nothing against our people or against the customs of our ancestors, I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. They examined me and wanted to release me because I was not guilty of any crime deserving death. But when the Jews objected... I was uh, compelled to appeal to Caesar, not that I had any charge to bring against my own people. For this reason, I have asked to see you and talk with you. It is because of the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. They replied, We have not received any letters from Judea concerning you, and none of the brothers who have come from there has reported or said anything bad about you. But we want to hear what your views are. For we know that people uh, everywhere are talking against this sect. Christian, the, the, the Christian church. They're, they're calling the sect, yeah. Yeah, they're speaking it against it, right? But it, it good that they want to be able to actually hear from Paul, that they have these these open ears. And again, he tells his same story, right? This is what's this is what's happened here. Let me tell you guys again. And this is Paul's uh, modus operandi. Yep, that's I mean, a this great is, way to put it. He, he gets to a new city. Immediately he goes to the Jews mm -hmm. and shares with them uh, the gospel. And, uh, well, I don't know. So first of all, three days later. Yeah. Right. So he's been in Rome for three days. After this long journey, you know, he's, also, he's like, okay, Time to get to work. Yeah, let's assemble. Let's get the Jews together. He wants to share uh, with them. So he kind of makes this kind of introductory remark. He's just kind of feeling them out. Like, what have you heard about me? Yeah. Kind of where do you stand? Yeah. And he said, no, we haven't heard anything. Nobody's brought charges. No, we haven't heard any bad rumors about you, but we are curious about this sect. Because we hear, you know, people are talking bad about it. Yep. Whatever. And so, uh, verse 23, they arranged to meet Paul on a certain day. And came in even larger numbers to the place where he was staying. It was like, wow, the Paul is yeah, here? Yeah, We want to hear this. And this is great. Oh, this part is great. 
From morning till evening, yeah. he explained and declared to them the kingdom of God and tried to convince them about Jesus from the law of Moses and the prophets. In other words, the whole Old Testament, using that, the word, yeah. all the books that we have, we call our Old Testament. From morning till evening, that's a long Bible class there. Yeah. But these people were eating it up. No, that, it's, there's mean, a reason that's going that long. Yeah, he has the audience that's there. Yeah, and I'm sure there was all kinds of conversation and questions. Oh, yeah. And uh, Paul, who knew the scriptures forwards and backwards, a Pharisee of Pharisees, uh, you know, studied at the feet of Gamaliel, the most famous uh, uh, rabbi of his day, uh, incredibly uh, student, smart student of the word. Uh, this would have been a great Bible class to... I wish they had that recorded, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but we get almost nothing. We just get one little quote from it at the very end of his class. Uh, well, anyway, verse 24. Some were convinced by what he said, but others would not believe. Uh, they disagreed among themselves and began to leave after Paul made his final statement. Here it is. This is all we get for the quote. The Holy Spirit spoke the truth to your forefathers when he said, through the Isaiah the prophet, Go to this people and say, You will be ever hearing but never understanding. You'll be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I will heal them. I would heal them. If they turn, which that's the word for repent. Hmm. Um Therefore, and this is Paul again, therefore I want you to know that God's salvation has been sent to Gentiles and they will listen. So yeah, this is that similar pattern that Paul experienced every town he went to. Uh, go to the Jews, show them how Jesus fulfilled everything that the Old Testament had prophesied about the God's Savior. Uh, some believe, every town some believe, some Harden their hearts. And then Paul pronounced that same word of judgment. It was, um, uh, obviously Isaiah said it first. Mm -hmm. Jesus quoted that same passage yeah. uh, to them. That's what I was just going to bring up, yep. Yeah, and then Paul here, you know, specifically again, quotes it again as this really harsh word of judgment and says, okay, uh, you know, you were God's chosen people. This was God's plan. He sent the Messiah through you, to you first. Um, and just understand, you harden your hearts, you reject them, but the Gentiles will will believe. Yeah. They'll listen and they'll repent and they'll believe. And it's interesting because when that final comment is made, it's pretty uh, direct. It says it talks about them disagreeing, but it says that's when they begin to leave is after he says that. They finally hear that. But the ones who, who begin to leave, it seems like, are the ones who are are blocking it and are not believing it. But the ones that convinced seem like, you know, they're already there and maybe even hang around to be able to have some more uh, discussion that's there. But that really is the truth, you know. Uh, all Paul can do is be able to share the word with them. He does it directly from Scripture. He does it out of passion that the Spirit yeah. has given to them. And then he, that's, that's his job, right? Uh, I'm going to tell you about the word. Here's the Spirit, the passion that I have. Here's my own testimony. I would assume he probably shared it as a part of it. Uh, yeah, of gives it to the people, and from there, uh, that's where the the Lord takes that and, and goes along with that. And isn't that the same for you and I too? You know, not just as pastors, you yeah, and I as Christians, exactly. everybody watching and listening today too, that we are called to be able to share the word, to be able to share the gospel with people around us, to do so passionately knowing that it is the truth, not beating people down, but being able to, to give them the truth. Paul doesn't hold back either. Mm -hmm. You know, he shares that with them and allow the word then to do its work. Uh, we don't even know even maybe some of these people that do walk away, maybe later on the message has changed with, within them. Maybe they do think. I mean, that's kind of the last thing that's left, right? He mm -hmm. talks about their hearts and their ears, but he says, and if they turn... Then I would heal them. To to turn, you actually have to be going the other way. So who knows? Maybe some of these people that that did leave come back by the Lord's calling and and answer this call later on. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just a good, um, just encouragement for all of us. Just just because when you tell somebody about Christ, if they don't in our minds right. listen, gee, immediately that happens. Jump on yeah, the, yeah. 
And that's what happens to Paul. And if it happens to Paul, it's probably going to happen to, to us too. Yeah. I don't know if I can persuade or as it says convince somebody more yeah. than Dude. Paul would have been able to do so. Right. But it's don't be down in the dumps and say, "Well, I'm never going to try that again," or "That didn't that didn't work." Oh, exactly. And again, right? As we read through Acts, it sounds so rep repetitious because yeah. this is Paul does this all the time. He was rejected over and over again. But also in those same cities where he was rejected, hundreds and thousands of people believed. Yep. And that's just a part of the it, sharing the gospel. And it's really just part of our our lives in general too. I mean, think about people who are uh, wonderful inventors or who have come up with a, a grand business, it's pretty rare that a lot of people within a business realm even would be oh, like, yeah. yeah, I just pitched it this one time, and they were like, that's a good idea, and that's how yeah. I'm here on top. You'll hear about the failures yeah. people went through on so many occasions of being able to finally pitch it in the right way or come up with a plan that finally worked because somebody listened. And so if that happens just in our normal everyday life, well, this is part yeah. of our normal everyday life, you know? No, absolutely. And that's a common right success story. It's how many times Thomas Edison failed like a thousand oh, times man. before he finally got one light bulb that worked. Yeah. The, one of the uh, the local legends in Memphis is uh, a fellow by the name of Fred Smith was working on his MBA okay. at the University of Memphis. All right. And for his final, I don't know to call it a thesis or whatever, his final project, he he developed this company, this idea, this business idea of of uh, overnight delivery. Packages and the professor. That's the most ridiculous. This is in the seventies. Yeah. That's the most ridiculous. He got a D on it. Yeah. yeah. Then he went out and started FedEx. There you go. Good idea. <laughs> well, same thing with like WD forty isn't just a random name on the can, right? It literally took the forty, 40 times the until 40th, yeah, uh, until, until they got there. Chemicals. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you think about it, if you would have given up, you know, after thirty six or something like yeah, that, you know, and just this. but but there it is. And so uh, same thing. Just encouragement for us as Christians. To continue to push on with something that's important to us, right? All those gentlemen or women yeah. within our world continued on because it was something that was important mm -hmm. to them. And how much more important uh, is it to us about expressing who Christ is to people around us and having more people in heaven on the final day? Yeah, this I didn't prepare this. This is some. I'm pretty sure the Holy Spirit is uh, just kind of popped in my head right now. Yeah, talking about uh, failures because. Um, experimentation, experimentation, experiment. This is the only way we can really learn, especially in an environment we've never experienced before. Mm. And I would say for Desert Foothills and our mission to connect people to Jesus uh, in an environment that is literally unprecedented in our lifetime, uh, it does require a lot of uh, bravery, a lot of courage, to just experiment with a lot of different ways to do ministry. Mm -hmm. How do we do youth ministry uh, if we can't come together in large groups or worship or on and on? Um, so it will continue. We've done a lot of experiments this past yeah. year, but it's gonna, I'm just tell folks, and not all of them are gonna work. Yeah, That's just the nature of it, but we learn from those and we make a little make a little adaptation and, and okay, let's try this mm -hmm. uh, until, we, until we see the the progress that we want to see. So, yeah, a little uh, patience and uh, courage from the members here, as even as we continue into this year, because it's still going to be uh, a lot of obstacles. Yep, they're uh, to they're going to be there year. waiting for us. Yep. All right, Who, whose turn is it? We got two little verses left. You want to finish? Mine? I think it's only two, right? I'll yeah. tell you, verse thirty. For two whole years, Paul stayed there in his own rented house and welcomed all who came to see him. Boldly and without hindrance, he preached the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ, obviously. So more time he's, he's there, people probably still coming, maybe sometimes from morning to night, being able to hear this great word that he is able to, to preach. For two years, yeah. And there's no question like what he talked about when people came to see him. There was yeah. never... <laughs> Never wondered, but I wonder if he talked about Jesus. And so who knows, you know, the again, the benefits that come out of this. Probably different people coming to see him at different times. Probably yeah. some of the same people coming to see him over and over again that were developed and then later on got to go hopefully share of some of these, you know, amazing uh, just insights that he was able to produce and uh, give to them as well. So it was uh, here during this two-year kind of house arrest in Rome where he wrote... 
Philippians. Oh, I didn't. I didn't recognize Colossians, that was at the same time. Philemon, probably Ephesians. Wow. And then after two years, he was released, and um, he took another missionary journey. Uh, different sources, or you know, uh, I don't want to say legends. That's mm-hmm. a little too sure, sure, sure. Uh, whatever, but um, it's not recorded. Uh, in the scriptures, uh, but we know he was released. Uh, we know he wrote Second uh, Timothy, much you know years after this kind of event. Um, but he uh, one one uh, source says he went as far as Spain. Yeah, yeah. Go uh, see my ancestors there. To, yeah, to, yeah. To spread the gospel. Yep. Uh, but certainly he was an encouragement to the church, and he continued to. Sh- expand the kingdom more and more people brought more and more people to faith in christ uh by telling them what god had done um then he was uh rearrested mm-hmm. and this time a little more uh uh persecution going on yeah uh from the roman emperor and he he was in a jail jail in rome and the letter to second tim the letter the second letter to timothy, timothy. Uh, it was very clear about this is he's finished his race. Um, he was expecting execution. He was anticipating uh, seeing the Lord yeah, face to face. He's, li- he's lived a good life. You know, he's not this this young young man. You know, uh, mm-hmm. he's actually lived a pretty good life. And uh, as we I think noted on another occasion before, you know, this is where you know Paul's life does come to an end. Yeah, you know? and probably just in real life, this is probably where Luke. Uh, kind of wrapped up his research and, mm. and went back to Jerusalem and kind of published it, if you will. Yeah. Got it Got it all put together for Theophilus. And yeah, then yeah. Obviously, the church has started to get copies of it. and um, So we don't know uh, every detail of Paul's life after that, but those are kind of the big, the big things that happened in his life. And, of course, again, he was executed. Uh, what's really cool, though, is just kind of how the book ends. Like, it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, it ends with Paul's in his rented house, sharing the gospel with every single person he gets a chance to. He's still preaching and things still go on, yeah. And there's no, like, movie screen, the end. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It's just, and it's literally exactly how the story goes because we call it Acts. If we say it's the Acts of the Holy Spirit, you know, this is the beginning of the church. And... We're still living in the book of Acts. It's it's to be continued, and it's still and it presses on with that same title still today. Yeah, I mean, you could say Acts chapter two thousand and twenty <laughs> was pretty crazy. There was a worldwide pandemic. Yeah, and the churches didn't meet in person, and and now we're we are writing Acts chapter two thousand twenty one mm-hmm. uh, with how we carry on the the Great Commission, connecting people to Jesus. Yep. So we're still a part of this story. It's kind of cool. It's ongoing until Revelation when there Jesus comes back. And we uh, we encourage one another and point people, focus us on each other on our mission uh, until that day, the day of the Lord. Well, I don't think there's much more to add beside that. Good conclusion to a good book. Uh, thanks for keeping up with us uh, across this. And again, we'll start up... Uh, uh, the Gospel of Mark pretty soon here. A little bit shorter and a uh, little bit different content, obviously, dealing uh, with Christ and our focus on Him in a little different way. Mm-hmm. But remember, that's what all of Scripture is. Everything points to our Lord, the Old Testament, the New Testament, and again, our church today, constantly doing that in everything we do. Very cool. All right, well, let me pray with you, and we'll say adios to our Acts study. Heavenly Father, oh, thank you for... Uh, making it so obvious to us how you control uh, all things, time, weather. Uh, your hand is always working, um, <laughs> visible and, and even in the background, uh, to move us along into your plan uh, for this world, especially as a church and as Christians, uh, to share your love and your peace and your gospel. Uh, give us courage, and courage like Paul had, and zealousness to and just that focus of purpose in life uh, to be able to live as your representatives on this earth um, in every way at all times to all people. 
uh, help that uh, also to be, just be ingrained in our in our church community and our church mission uh, to be always about your work. Uh, continue to bless us with everything that we need uh, to do everything that you've called us to do. Uh, we ask this all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 All right. See you later on.